let's draw the control flow graph of this method. You see here method M, which has the following body. And this body we're going to represent with a graph consisting of nodes and edges. We will draw one node for each statement essentially, or sometimes for parts of statements like here, this expression in the if condition. Over here we have our graph. We already have two nodes here, E and X. E represents the entry node of our control flow graph. That's where we begin execution of the method. And X represents the exit node of the graph. That's where we end all executions of this method. So every execution will start here, go through some nodes and edges and end here. So first let's add some nodes or statements to our method. The very first statement is A. It's the first statement that executes. So let's add this here and say A. So when we start our method we will have to execute A first. So let's connect the two with an arrow. The next thing that happens is our if statement. Particularly the condition inside our if statement is checked. So this method B will have to be called. This happens in a condition, so let's use this different notation, this diamond shape here, and let's connect the two together. So after A, we do B. Now B is a condition and there will be a decision. There's two possibilities if B is true and if B is false. But before we add those edges here, Let's first look at what else goes in this graph. We have a method call to C, so let's add a statement C, and we have a method call to D, another statement D. Now we need to connect things, so if B is true, what will happen? So flow through. If B is true, we're going to go to C. And if B is false, we're going to go to D. Now what happens after C finishes? Well, our if statements body goes from here to here. So after C finishes, we continue execution after our if statement. So the next statement is D, which means we'll need a flow from C to D. And then after D, we're done. We return from the method. So we need to go from D to X. So let's organize it a little bit. First we go to A, then we check our condition B. And then if the condition is true, we do C. If it's not true, we don't do C. Okay, so C is only done if the condition is true. If the condition is false, we skip. C and we go right ahead to D and otherwise we do C and then D and then we terminate.